To shed more light on the matter, we have with us infectious disease expert Dr. Ensel Salvagna. He's joining us live via StreamYard. Dr. Salvagna, first of all, let's, let's clarify. What do we know? What do we not know with regards to this African variant being in Pasay City? Is that a, is, uh, have we determined that or is still be, still, this still being uh, um, uh, investigated? Well, the report of the Genome Center um, actually does confirm that we have six instances of the uh, South African variant in Pasay City, and uh, a few of these are returning uh, overseas Filipinos, but they're still trying to determine if uh, some of the other ones uh, were, do have some travel history. So these are real. However, they still are, um, you know, uh, they're still relatively low in terms of number. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're hoping that this is exactly what we want to do with uh, biosurveillance. We, we catch these uh, very early on so we can do our containment procedures. Okay, so tell us about this variant, the South African variant. We know the British variant, we've heard, is a bit more infectious. That's one thing that people know about this. What about the, the South African variant? What do we know about it? Well, the South African variant uh, has two mutations uh, that are um, of concern. So one is the N501Y, uh, which is similar to the British variant, uh, the UK variant. And also it has uh, E484K, which is linked to um, some what is called immune escape. So there's decreased efficacy of some of the vaccines. Um, it doesn't completely remove efficacy from the vaccine, but it does tend to decrease it a little bit. Okay, but that's, so I guess the question right now is we, we just started these, I mean, people keep saying ceremonial only because counting county pa, but these are real vaccines now being administered to, to frontliners. Uh, does this change anything with our strategy? Because now people are talking, oh, maybe let's make it a little bit earlier uh, sa Pasay kasi dyan, dyan na detect. How should we react? Because I anticipate, a lot of people anticipate, we'll be hearing a lot of these different news in the coming days. Uh, does, should this confuse our strategy or do we just stay the course, whatever that is? I think it's a, it's a good um, uh, thing to be proactive, especially with the vaccination. Now, it takes vaccination because you need two doses, and then it takes about another couple of weeks to kick in. It takes about six weeks for this to kick in. But it's kind of a forward-facing strategy, but um, that's not going to have an impact in the short term. So we have to keep doing what we're supposed to do. Um, this is relatively early. Um, we're seeing an increase in number of cases in Pasay, but it's still a minority uh, of the number of cases uh, is the South African variant. So we actually don't think that the South African variant is the main driver of those cases. We think it's still the regular COVID. And maybe, you know, people are starting to get complacent, um, especially uh, as we open up. So that, what that tells me is that we have to increase our vigilance anew, do the things that work, whether it's the UK mm. variant or the South African variant. It's still the same. Uh, contact tracing, uh, minimum health standards. And the thing about the South African variant is, though, it's not as better, uh, it's not as well defined as the UK variant. So even if it does have the N501Y, uh, there are reports that it doesn't seem to be more, uh, uh, more infectious, and neither is it deadlier um, than the UK variant. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, if at all increased in terms of the transmission, it's anywhere from 0% to 50%, while the UK variant is 70%. So um, the increased transmission for the South African variant remains to be seen. Yes, but, but Doc, I, another bottom line question, do we know that the vaccines and the candidate vaccines that we're waiting for or are already in the pipeline will still work with these variants or is it too, uh, too early to tell? Right, so there are some preliminary stat studies. Um, they see that Astra um, uh, may have some vulnerability to the South African variant. Uh, Pfizer and Moderna have said that uh, it seems like their vaccines work, although there is a decrease in the antibody titers. But for Sinovac, actually, serendipitously, since it's a whole um, inactivated vaccine, it seems to create a more diverse uh, antibody and uh, cell-mediated immunity response. And so the preliminary studies by Sinovac and in Brazil show that it seems to work pretty well against the different variants. So of all the vaccines, this might actually be uh, the, the one that's good for different kinds of variants. And so we'll see. Um, again, a lot of this is laboratory data, and it's not in real, 
in real world. But uh, theoretically, we know that the whole virus vaccines uh, uh, produce a more robust immunity and are more resistant to variants. Okay, maraming salamat po. That was Dr. Edsel Salvagna of the UPNIH.